Hey everybody, it's Matthew with our fourth video here on our bill. We ran into a little issue there on the top, but we were able to get it in. Um, so if you check out our last video, you see we were having trouble, but we were able to get it in. I just had to maneuver some things around. Uh, so we're now ready to the last and final part, which is the watering system and the feeders. So we got the top on and your tray, it just sets up there, just like that, it's got the little tabs on the bottom and it just sets in there. On your water, you got a little hole that comes out right here. And these pieces came in your little bag with the extra stuff. So we just kind of push that in there, twist it a little bit, because it is a very snug fit, so you don't have water leakage. You've got a little flat washer you put on there, and then you've got your cap slash filter, a little filter in there to keep it from. And you just, Tighten it on there. I do it hand tight. I have done it a little tighter before, but mainly, oh, I mainly just do them hand tight, and it'll keep that washer getting tight. And then you just set it up there. Now on the side of your pen, you'll notice you've got these little breaks right here. Everything else is interconnected. You have a little break with a little tab there. And that is from your watering system that goes in. That's your water. Water comes in through a little black hose, goes in through there. You just slide in there like that to that top piece. And as you see, the nipple just little drinker part, nipple part, what we call it. Let me zoom in, y'all, because it's hard to see okay, it. I'm on the wrong side, probably. Okay, well. Camera difficulties for okay. me. We're still learning how to do all this. And there we go. It just ends like that. And then we'll just put a little piece of black on there. Black hose. Same thing again. It's right here on the upper corner. And then you just slide it all the way until it hits the next one. You just kind of got to aim it. Slide on in. You get to the next one in. Slide there. And I go all the way there. And so on and so on. It's pretty quick. A lot better than a person that can see better than me. Now, when you're running your hoses and you're going down, on the very end, you're just going to run through, it's going to fill up, go down through the hose, fill up, down through all the way to the hose. And when it gets down to the end, you're just going to have this little stopper here. You put the stopper on the end of your hose, and that's your drain plug. So in case you ever had a water leak or you needed to empty it or something, you could just pull this plug out, and it'll just empty the whole tank. I've got it to where I get a bucket. I don't quite go that long. To me, that's too long. So I just kind of cut it off right here, about that much, just so I have enough to get me a bucket or something underneath from there. But as you can see, you just push on. Got to use one of that there for a second. I'm gonna these all the way down here. And you see, they just slide on. It's got the little ribs on there. It's perfect. Make sure you able to see. No, sir. You have to tell me if you can't see. Okay.
slides right on there. Yep, they slide right on. And then the other thing is here is you just have to kind of measure what you need and we just take it and cut it. I've got it. I didn't pre-cut. I've got to get this thing finished and get some quail out of one pin into another. I've kind of pushed this off a little too long. And there you go. And now you're completely done on your waters. So your waters come with little catch cups so you're not dripping water into your tray here, making a mess. And what they do, as you can see, they're just formed like that right there. So you just go in here and you don't drop it. And you can't put this on until it's in there. Sorry. You have to bend it out a little bit. Or something. do that you just have to do a few more times and then these are your fill trays now your fill trays are high on the front low in the back for the birds to stick their head through the door what you do is you stick these little green things on there and you've got grooves cut out on each one of those green things Right here. Can you see that? I'm trying to. You see that? Now, yes, sir. Little tabs on each one of these. And if you look right here, you can see when you put it in, it locks it in place so the feeder can't go anywhere. Yes, sir. The chickens can't do anything. And then you fill it up, and they, of course, they stick their heads out here at the door and eat. They have their waters in the back. Water troughs up here is really good. You've got your catch trays to catch all of your. Uh, manure that you catch like i said we put it we just put it right back in our compost for a couple months let it go and then after that uh you know turn this into some good good compost for your garden flower beds whatever uh, we've got some roses out there that are growing and can keep the goats from eating them uh we've actually got our first bloom today so um and a lot of that came out of our compost everything all of our garden everything comes out of compost but here is uh, the little tray, like I said, it slides around. Uh, we're putting uh, five quail to per pen, sometimes four, because we have some very large quail. Um, so we do that and we put one male and four hens. Uh, we fill this thing up and we feed uh, 24 hours a day. Uh, because the better food they have, the more water they have, they're just gonna produce a bigger and better egg and they're gonna be healthier for it. We also have them in an enclosed building uh, so that we're keeping them out of the elements, out of the cold and the heat. And we have it air conditioned uh, where we can maintain it and just get our healthy supply of eggs just constantly. Uh, like I said, our goal is to raise more quail, sell quail, sell quail eggs, and also uh, for our eating, um, we, we eat what we raise here. Uh, we've been eating some of the quail as they get out of when they quit laying, we'll do that. Um, and it's really good eating. But also we raise the eggs, we eat the eggs. Um, so we, we're just trying to expand our quail as much as possible to 
for homesteading for ourselves, but also for market uh, to bring in uh, some much needed money to keep expanding the homestead. But that is what we're doing. And like I said, we'll just keep putting these in here. One other little thing they do send, they do send these. So when you put your feed in there, you can drop these down in there to keep the quail from pecking them out. I tried them when I first liked them. I'm not a fan of them. I can see the advantage of them, but I'm just not a fan of them. Uh, so I don't use them. You're welcome to use them and try them. They may work for you. I'm never saying that they don't work. Every homestead is different. Every application is different. What may work for me may not work for you. What you may do on your homestead may not work. It's preference, it's your setup, and everything. So always, always try everything. And then make up your mind what works for you. Uh, because your setup, your, your animals may be different. So always, always try everything. Don't be willing to just try one thing. Try as much as you can. Expand your thoughts. And that's what it takes. To learn how to run your homestead the best is to make mistakes and have failure. And learn from it and go what works. Like I said, what works for me may not work for you. But in my mind, if you're getting into quail and you want an easy setup, this is it. Yes, it took a little time to put together, but I'm shooting a video. I can throw this thing together by myself really quick. I'm not under the stress of the camera because there's been a couple couple bloopers and a couple outtakes on this where we've had to stop and go back. And we may even post some of those bloopers on our Facebook page. But, uh, so it took a little time and we're doing it for the camera and we're not doing it uh, but for myself, I can throw them together pretty quick. Like I said, this is our second one. And if I keep going the way I want, because I have other cages, home-built cages I built, but my goal is I'd like to have one more of these set up by the end of the year. And then of course, we're going to get us a, a big incubator. So, and we're actually going to go with the hatching time incubators. I've, I've looked at those and I really like those. So we're going to be using those as well and we'll probably do a video, but. We're gonna go and finish setting this thing up right quick and I'm gonna throw it in that thing and hopefully in a few days we will go into the brood room and post both of these side by side so you can see them in action that way. But as for right now, we enjoy you. Thank you, this is Sunday in April in Central Mississippi and it's a beautiful spring day. It's actually warm, it's above 80 today so it feels real good. But Please remember to like, subscribe, and comment. We welcome comments. Uh, I love to be critiqued. I, I don't uh, get offended when people say something to me. Uh, so you can just comment all you want. But again, please like and share, subscribe, to keep coming these videos together. If you would like to see something and you want to see how something is done or you want to see something we're doing here, uh, just hit us up and we'll make a video on it for you, especially for you. Uh, and just keep watching as the workshop comes together and as we keep expanding and making it better. Thank you and have a wonderful day.